What is going on everyone? All right, so now that we have completed the uh, spec sheet and block diagram and we've gone through the data sheet walkthrough, it's now time to start actually designing our circuit. And so the first place that we're gonna focus on is going to be the bridge rectifier and the smoothing capacitor part of the circuit. So real quick, let's just take a look at the application schematic. So we're starting right here in this spot. Um, this also includes the input capacitor right here. So this is this is where we're going to start. Um, so this should look actually kind of familiar to the other power supply project I did. So hopefully as we do more and more of these together, we will start to see some patterns and things will start looking more and more familiar and it'll be easier for us to do. So like I said, our two main components that we're going to be sourcing and kind of uh, doing calculations for are going to be the bridge rectifier and the input capacitor also known as the smoothing capacitor. So this is a good little diagram that I used in the last series as well for the last project. Um, it basically just shows you the circuit and then the diagram of the waveform. So here we got AC, which is, looks like a sinusoid. And then on the output of the rectifier, we have what would normally be these dashed purple lines where it says waveform without capacitor. So say this capacitor wasn't there, you'd get these really huge humps and deep valleys right here. The, the huge highs and very low lows, All right? And then when you add the smoothing capacitor, it smooths the waveform to give us a more steady state DC source, which is really helpful for our flyback controller to work with, right? Because that way we don't have a hugely varying input voltage that our flyback controller has to try to compensate for, right? So we get a much more consistent, um, you know, behavior out of our power supply by doing this, right? So let's just move to the first component. And I'll just give us a, I'll show the component calculation notes and everything I wrote for, for doing this. And so um, the first one we're gonna focus on are the rectifier diodes, which are these four right here, D1, D2, D3, D4. And the first component parameter that we're gonna focus on, of course, is going to be the peak reverse max. So AKA the voltage rating. So whenever you're looking on say digi key, that's what this parameter should look like. So voltage dash peak reverse max, which is the maximum reverse voltage the diode can handle before it gets damaged. So here I've drawn, this is a diode in the forward direction. So you have positive to negative is dropping in the, in the direction of the little arrow that the diode makes. And then in reverse direction, it is going against the arrow, right? So this is what we refer to as the, the this rating is how how much voltage it can handle in the reverse direction where the polarity is, is dropped against the arrow, right? So the V peak reverse max that we are looking for that we require for this circuit, right? It goes all the way back to our spec sheet. So it is going to be make sure our V Peak reverse max is greater than our Vn max times the square root of two because whenever you rectify, you uh, to figure out what our rectified voltage level sits at, you have to multiply by the square root of two. I'll go into another video about how that works, but it has to do with the fact that our line voltage is is the like say it's 120 volts or 265 volts. That's an RMS value. So what that really works out to in terms of like a peak value is uh, square to multiply it by the square root of two, right? So V peak reverse max needs to be greater than 265 times the square root of two. The reason we have 265, if you remember, our spec sheet called out a maximum input voltage of 265 volts. So that means our power supply needs to be able to handle 265 volts on the input. So what that boils down to, or the first line of, um, where they, the first point of contact with that 265 volt value is going to be um, the peak reverse max value for our, our rectifier diode, right? So we go 265 times the square root of two equals 375 volts. So that means whenever you're sourcing your rectifier diodes, make sure they have a, v, a peak reverse max voltage greater than 375 volts. The next important parameter for whenever you're sourcing your rectifier diodes are going to be the average rectified current rating and also known as just the current rating, which is just how much current ID, how much current can flow through the diode before it burns up basically. 
So, uh, like I said, the amount of current the dog can have before it gets sandwiched. Yeah, that's what I said. Okay, so the way we solve for this is we go P in equals P out divided by the efficiency of the system. And the reason we're using P in and P out is because power equals voltage times current, right? And then what we're going to do is we have a voltage range, so therefore we have a current range, um, right? So this is actually supposed to have a one here. I don't know why that I think got chopped off. Um, so this is supposed to say one. So like I said, looking at this calculation right here, V equals VI, PN is 120 watts. That is what is specified in our spec sheet. So that's what our power supply is supposed to be supplying per hour uh, requirement. Divided by, I just assumed an efficiency here. This is the this little Greek letter. I don't know what letter that is, but divided by 0 0.85 gives us 141 watts of, in, of input power, right? So that's what our input power is. And so our input power is just going to be volts times you know input current aka that the i here is going to be the current that is flowing through our rectifier diode is is what is known as the input current right and so what we want to do is figure out well what's the highest value our input current could ever be like what is the worst case scenario and if you know since p equals vi the the worst case scenario for the current in terms of when will current be at its maximum well that's whenever the voltage is at its minimum so we're looking at 120 volts V, or 120 volts, sorry, for our V times I equals 141.8 watts. That equals 1.18 amps. Now real quickly, why I chose 120 volts on the input is because that is what happens. That's what you get when you rectify 85 volts AC rectifies to 120 volts DC. So that's how I got that 120 value. So we look at our we know the current was a maximum when our voltage is at a minimum. When our voltage was at a minimum per hour specification, our, our minimum voltage per hour specification was 85 volts AC, right? So we just took our minimum voltage that we specified, rectified it to get 120. And then we want to figure out, okay, well, what's the current um, whenever this is that value? Whenever, whenever our, our voltage is at its minimum, and we know that it is 1.18 amps. So we just need to make sure our current rating is higher than 1.18 amps, right? And so that's pretty much all of the important things you need for sourcing your rectifier diodes. Also give you a little hint is a lot of these rectifier diodes, they're actually um, suppliers and manufacturers will actually make these in a package, right? So they'll package all four diodes together. So you can look for that um, whenever you're, you're like shopping around. That's pretty convenient when you do layout because then you don't have four individual diodes on there but four individual diodes works just as well as, as one package so um yeah moving on so then the next main component we need to take a look at is going to be that smoothing capacitor remember i showed you it's, it's this capacitor value right here so um of course we want to make sure our smoothing capacitor has an appropriate voltage rating and what is that voltage rating you ask well it just needs to be higher than the maximum line voltage so v bulk max needs to be equal to or greater than or v bulk v bulk max is the the maximum voltage of this, of this value right here this plus v is the v bulk um it's so just the maximum voltage that our capacitor will ever experience right and so that's going to be also vn max times square root of 2 which is 265 times square root of 2 the 375 volts that's our v bulk max um so it's pretty much the same thing as our, our rectifier diode actually right so again we just look at the worst case scenario figure out what that is and then do our calculations based on that all right so then lastly we want to calculate our capacitance. So what should the capacitance of our, our bulk capacitor be, of our smoothing capacitor be? And so a good rule of thumb you can start out with is two to three microfarads per watt of input power. So I'm just gonna be extra safe here since we don't really have other constraints. Like let's say you had other constraints on this project for like say size of your power supply or bomb cost or something like that. Then, then we'll we can get to some more granular equations around this. But this is just a good rule of thumb to get you started. Like if, if this 
Like this number will definitely work. Three microfarads per watt will smooth to the requirements of any power supply, right? So this will give you this will this will work. This will give you a, a perfectly uh, well operating power supply. So like I said, we just go three times our input power, which we've already calculated. Our our maximum input power is one hundred forty one point one eight. I say maximum power. Our input power is calculated to be 141.18. Um, as per this equation up here, we just did the 120 watts, which is what we specified, divided by 0.85 to get that. So we go 141.18 times three, or three microfarads per watt, gives us 423.54 microfarads. And so that's basically our input capacitor value that we want. So um, that, that wraps up. That's everything you need to know for figuring out how to calculate and select your component values for your input rectifier and your smoothing capacitor. Um, be sure to drop a like if this helped you out. I would really appreciate that. And also subscribe if you want me. I post regular videos um, right in the middle of a power supply project. So you'll probably see a bunch of subsequent power supply videos showing up. In the next couple of days, I post like every like two or three times a week. I'll I'll be posting videos like this. Um. So yeah. So if you want to see more videos like this, then uh, subscribe, please. And uh, thank you so much.